This 1994 movie is about an interstellar teleportation device found in Egypt leads to a planet with humans resembling ancient Egyptians who worship the god Ra. Stars Kurt Russell and James Spader. Name that movie. What's going on, everybody? It is Tuesday night at 9.30 p.m. Central Time. That is 7.30 Pacific, 10.30 Eastern. That means it is time for the tagline. We are the Cinefanatics. My name is Robert Adams. I am unimpressed. As you should be. <laughs> That's Chris Adams over there. <laughs> they can read. Oh yeah, there's there, there's words down below. Yeah, how are y'all doing tonight? Uh, we got a lot, a lot to cover tonight. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Do we? I mean, we could we could dabble in a couple of things. We could talk a little bit about uh Fast and the Furious and some FCL, and let's talk about some box office and a whole lot of like fun fun stuff. But here's Um, here's here's the fun thing here's the fun thing i'll say this we're about to test the uh limits of my microphone uh and exactly what it picks up because i had that fcl match today at five o'clock our time it's currently 9 30 our time uh that was four and a half hours ago if i'm doing my math correctly i ate maybe an hour and a half before that so we're really gonna find out if this microphone picks up all the that my stomach's currently having because I'm starving out of my face. I've been in front of a camera for four and a half hours almost, give or take. Yeah. Well, that'll be fun. I think there's a bag of chips somewhere around here. Um <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Get that chip off your shoulder and into your stomach. And that's really loud. (laughs) Anyways, uh, guys, thank y'all for being here as we get this show started. Of course, as always, y'all have any questions, comments, anything you want to say, streamlabs.com slash Cinefanatics. We also accept the YouTube Super Chat. All those are wonderful places to get your thoughts, feelings, and opinions heard out. Uh, We will definitely call them out. Uh, like we, the one that we got before we even started tonight, uh, we got a Streamlabs firm Cutter Hell saying I was going to stay up and watch tonight, but I may have to I have to be up for my job at five in the morning. Good lord, ouch! Uh, Robert loved your reaction to Halloween Kills. I'm freaking pumped for that movie. F9 was a lot of fun. Can't wait to catch up with y'all in Austin in October. Man, there's a whole lot that he said in there that we're gonna uh, unpack. Uh, yeah, over the past week, we did have uh, trailer reactions to, uh, we had another Shang-Chi trailer, and I also did a reaction to Halloween Kills. Uh, both of these trailer, both of these trailers look fantastic. The movies look so good. Um, so we did the trailer reaction for that. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, Fast and Furious F9 here in a little bit, and uh, I would say friends of the channel, uh, or friend of the channel, he's, he's one person. Uh fellow Schmodown competitor is uh, Ben Bateman. He is uh, branching out of movie trivia. He's doing, he, he does music. So he will be touring the country later on this fall uh, in Austin, Texas. So we picked up tickets to that. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. If you are interested in Ben Bateman's music, uh, we can probably put a link up or something, but uh, yeah, we'll, we will be at his concert on October 30th. Come come join us. Come hang out. It's going to be a lot of fun. Anyways. That's a great thing. He was actually on backstage today talking about it. Each and every one of his concerts that he's doing uh, this fall is going to be like a like a fun little just hangout kind of a thing where I think there's only like so many tickets available for each one. And he's not going to be like, Obviously, he's not going to be performing in like a uh, Madison Square Garden type venue. He's going to be in in smaller venues that will play better with like acoustic tracks and everything, which is exactly what he's going to be doing. So he uh, it's it's going to be very like low key and very, uh, very personal. So it's going to be a lot of fun, you know, for anybody who shows up to those because it's going to be like seeing a bunch of family because we're all going to know Ben from you know, schmo down and from his, from him and Andrew doing like the action guys and all that. So 
it's going to be like everybody, old friends getting together, hanging out and enjoying our, uh, enjoying our bud, Ben Bateman and his music. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Um, so let me see before we get any further started, uh, let's say what's up camshaft here as we get started. Garth is here. Uh, camshaft is talking about the gentleman. Uh, can we talk about Alex, uh, Marzoni stopping by? We can yeah. do that here in a second. Um, who else is here? Oh, Vernon's here. Okay. Anyways, um, Lola's getting started <laughs> early tonight. Oh yeah. Lola, Lola's down to the action already. <laughs> Anyways, uh, those of you all in the chat, thank wow. y'all for being here. I know I said Vernon like real quick, but uh, this joke coming off of, uh, let's get ready to talk Schmodown's. Uh, oh, Vernon's standard. here. Vernon's yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's cool. He can stay. <laughs> I guess. Uh, real quick before we get uh, dive into anything else. Uh, as always, let's talk about Patreon. Patreon.com slash Cinefanatics. Hop on there. Hop on the tier that's good for you. Uh, you had a match in the FCL today. Uh, yes, you did. It was this match here. Uh, so because of that, that means that we should be doing this coming Thursday will be the FCL replay. Let's really find out exactly what was going on between your ears during this match, because that would be really interesting to find out. Uh, so, so a couple of things with this, uh, first and foremost, uh, I'm, uh, I want to jump into like the personal just for a bit. Uh, tomorrow you are getting your second shot. Yep. So, uh, while we are going to announce shows and stuff that's coming up here in the next like 24, 48 hours, uh, just keep in mind some of this is subject to change due to however he's feeling. So yep. uh, the plan as of right now will be Thursday night, uh, probably around like nine, was it nine central, seven Pacific, 10 Eastern. Uh, we will be doing the FCL replay for patrons changing this this time. Uh, and probably from here going on, we've decided to lower the Patreon tier that you need to be at to participate in the FCL replay that we will do. Uh, yeah. Starting starting with this one on Thursday, as long as you are at the due tier, the $5 due tier, you will be able to watch that with us. And the thing about that is, is that honestly, we want to make that $5 tier, that due tier, we want to make that more valuable. Uh, because we're all about growth here on this channel and we absolutely need to be growing this Patreon right now. And best way to do that is to put as much value as we can into probably the e one of the easiest tiers for most people to jump into. Uh, the thing is I, I absolutely want to be able to share, you know, thoughts and feelings and kind of let people in on the behind the scenes of our matches and, and how we do and what we're doing. Uh, I like the idea of like having as many people who can, who want to hear that be a part of it as possible. So uh, we wanted to lower that. We wanted to, you know, just make it accessible for as many people as possible to come, come here. So the great thing is that we're moving it to the $5 tier and it may not even happen this Thursday, depending on how I feel. So <laughs> uh, if it doesn't, we will make sure to let people know via social media. Uh, we're yep. going to play it by ear. So as of right now, it will probably be like Thursday during the day. We'll make that like kind of a last minute decision. And if for some reason it doesn't happen Thursday, you can bet that it will happen and it will happen before the uh, Twitch VOD disappears because we don't know when the uh, the Twitch matches are getting mm. uploaded to YouTube yet with the whole SCN network and, and Schmodown uh, shifting of their of their programming. So, yeah. Uh, so there's that that's coming up. Um, uh, also for Patreon at same same tier at the five dollar due tier. Uh, you will be able to join us for our monthly watch along. The Patreon watch along this month is going to be Space Jam. Uh, right now, I believe we are tentatively looking at doing it on uh, the 15th of this month. So we are doing it right before the new Space Jam comes out. So if you want to hang out with us, watch a movie that I'm almost certain has not aged very well at all. Uh, yeah, the $5 dude here. We're going to have a lot of fun with that. He hasn't aged well. Mm-mm. 
Uh, also, outside of Patreon, uh, stuff we have that's upcoming tomorrow night, uh, again, depending on <laughs> it, how he's feeling. Uh, tomorrow night, we will be continuing our breakdown of Loki. This is going to be, even though this says episode three, I forgot to change the word. Uh, this will be uh, episode four breakdown. It's going to be tomorrow night. It'll be with me, Miss Kelsey Kirkland. And if my brother's up to it, he, he, he may join us as well. That's the thing to keep in mind. This one, this stream will absolutely be happening tomorrow night, no matter what. It's just yeah. a matter of whether or not my pretty face will be a part of it or not. You can you can put it back on my pretty face. Yeah, it'll be it'll be whether or not this this you get the visage of this amazing hips. I'm not vain at all. I again I don't know what I'm saying about myself, honestly. Apparently, I don't know what day it is. That's right. It's June 29th, so the 15th of July. Um, and We're then going into July. Oh man, yeah. where's this year going? It's flying by much faster than last year did. Like last year could have flown by a lot faster than it. It, it could have just quickly have just gone. But That's no. A fact. Uh, this Saturday, you are looking at potentially doing uh, the Bad Batch breakdown episodes nine and ten. I expect that I shouldn't have any uh, vaccine issues come Saturday, so I absolutely should be doing the Bad Batch breakdown episodes nine and ten with Mister Adam Witt happening this Saturday. Uh, no image for that because reasons, I mean, we, we're doing them two weeks at a time now. So, you know, might have a good image coming from the episode that hasn't aired yet, in which case we don't have an image prepared yet. But regardless, uh, it's going to be fun. Breaking down that show with Adam Witt has been just a blast. I love hanging out with that guy. He is so much fun to talk, one, to talk to in general, but two, to talk to about Star Wars. He is a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of passion for that property. So it is, I know a lot of people have, have been missing it. I will say it's can't miss TV. I mean, you got to come check it out. You got to come watch. It's, it's, it's an absolute blast. So yeah. yeah. Uh, and then uh, this coming Monday, the 5th of July, <laughs> we will sure? be doing. Yeah, I'm certain. Uh, we will be doing a public watch along. Yeah. We will be doing a public watch along of Captain America, the first Avenger. Um, this is in celebration. Of course, we've got Black Widow finally coming out into the theaters. So we're going to continue our Marvel movie watch along with Captain America, which I feel like is appropriate because not only is it right before Black Widow, it's also the day after July 4th. Oh, look at you, recreating the thumbnail. How ah. nice. <laughs> so that'll be uh, this Monday. Uh, I believe that will also be at like the 9 Central, 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. Uh, if you are a fan of Captain America, the first Avenger, like we are, come join us. That will be public. You do not have to be a part of the Patreon. It will be public here on YouTube. Any old person can come and watch it. So that's going to be a lot of fun as well. Anyways. That's it for like all this upcoming stuff, shout outs and whatnot. Uh, what personal stuff do we have going on? Um, I mean, well, like we were saying that, you know, I'm getting my second shot this Wednesday. Finally, finally leaving this entire last year behind me. Um, it, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's something I'm looking forward to getting done and just knocking out. Probably should have done it sooner, but you know, it is what it is. It's getting done now. It's just better to get it done, which if there's anybody out there for some reason watching this that has not been vaccinated yet, I believe most of our live audience right now has, but if for some reason you catch this later and you haven't go get vaccinated, it's, it's the, it's honestly the best after this whole last year it is literally the best thing that you can do to help other people around you go get vaccinated. That's, that's what I'm saying. You're, you're already done. You already got yours. You're fully vaccinated now. I'm about to knock mine out. I should be fully vaccinated. You know, I think it was within two weeks after getting the second shot. So we're about to be, we're about to be all good in this household for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, we just got to get one for Lola. I don't think you got to get one for Lola. I don't know if there's a she, kitty vaccine. She doesn't leave the house. So, Oh, okay. Yeah. She's fine then. She, um, she, she, she quarantines for life. Yeah. Um, there's also this that if, uh, if you are still feeling, you're still feeling good, and if you can refrain from putting Vernon down, 
there might be a uh, uh, FCL after show that you may be appearing on also again this week. <laughs> so. Yep. Yep. If I feel good enough after my shot tomorrow, I will be on a fans view. Obviously, if I feel like trash, then I will be on nothing. Not the even bed. our own. Not even our you own will show. Be, I will be, you will be on the bed. <laughs> I'll be over there, probably either watching a movie or passed out. Yeah. Um, for me personally, I'm just getting, I'm trying to crank out a lot of work. So uh, we do have a Fast and Furious ranking that we have filmed. I am furiously trying to put it together as fast as i can uh because if i don't get it out very soon then it's really not gonna matter that when it comes out on this channel so can we have like a account here here you know keep actually keep talking i'm gonna do something oh, okay uh just don't get the stream shut down <laughs> no i'm not it's <laughs> Let's fine. not do that uh so yeah I, i'm trying to crank that out as fast as i can and hopefully i should be up within the next like day or two that's what i'm aiming for it's what i'm shooting for yeah uh otherwise that's it that's that's all i'm really dealing with right now so cool uh movies that there you go wish it was a little bit bigger but you know whatever yeah but then people can't see our twitter and uh instagram and letterbox addresses i'm not gonna leave it okay there you go so if you want to follow us on twitter instagram and letterbox that's those addresses right there you know what? It'll get you clicks. Maybe not from the audience you want, but it'll get you clicks. It's probably actually much better watching you sleeping than watching me sleep. That's a fact. Because I, sl- like, n- no joke, I sleep like I had gone out drinking every night. <laughs> I just, like, <laughs> I just crash on the bed and that's it. <laughs> and yes, granted, I do enjoy, like, drinks on a regular basis i mean like you go out and just get completely trashed like toe up and then just you, you don't even remember that you fell into your bed that's how i sleep i sleep like that <laughs> and then wake up and whistle a happy tune and go to work sort of maybe without the whistling whistle while you work <laughs> um Movies watched. Have we seen anything? Well, okay. We're going to talk about this, but have y'all seen any new movies? I like trying to remember that we have to discuss this. Uh, what movies have y'all seen over the past week that anything y'all could recommend? Uh, I know I've got one that uh, I saw like a you like one of the ads before YouTube videos uh, that I was like, ooh, this looks interesting. So I'm going to try to watch it at some point when I'm probably done with the ranking video. Uh, otherwise, I think the only other new movie I know, at least I have seen over the past week, I believe was F9. You believe you saw F9? I believe I saw it. No, I mean, I, I meant that in the phrase of I believe that is the only one. Like, I know I've seen yeah. it. I just believe yeah. I haven't seen anything else new. Uh, I think it's the only new one I saw this week also. So, yeah, it's just been really busy. Yeah, because before that, the last new one I saw was Iron Giant, which I sang the praises of last week on Tagline. Yep. So it's been a little <laughs> bit. It's been a little bit getting uh, ready for the match and everything today. Um, is that time well spent? I don't know. I <laughs> watched them sleep enough in the FCL today. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> just when I just when I thought it it that he 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 could. Uh, I got. I'm speechless. That was a good um, one. I liked it. <laughs> just when I thought he could make one that stings enough, he found a way. Found found a way to just completely just rattle my brain. I can't even say words anymore. This is just going downhill really quickly. Vernon's doing a good job, really putting the heat on Chris in the chat. Vernon's bad enough. I'm going to catch that from uh, Reddit. I don't need it from you too. <laughs> This is what you get for talking crap about Reddit. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Speaking of, how is that doing? I do like that both of us went over there like this morning. We're like, hi, guys. <laughs> no, I went over there after my match. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. You went over there after match. You're like, well, huh, that went well. 
Uh, so yeah, if y'all have any other movies, anything y'all want, uh, y'all want to recommend, drop those in the chat. Uh, of course, as always, Streamlabs Super Chat still open. <clears throat> um, so before we dive into like some actual movie news, let's let's briefly talk about this FCL match. Um, it happened. Ag- yeah, again, we're again we're gonna dive into it more with this FCL replay, but. Uh, that's that's more of like we're actually gonna sit down and uh, bring up the question: Where the hell exactly was your brain at at this time? That's that video. This stream. Just I- I- anyone who wasn't watching the gold standard over on Let's Get Ready to Talk Schmo Down uh, right before this stream started. Uh, what were your like uh, your thoughts coming off of it? Because you actually uh, worded it very well over there. Uh, and I'm not going to be able to remember what I worded over there at all. Um, it, here's the thing. Uh, I'll, uh, this is what I'll post. Is I, I do remember this because this is what I was thinking about before going on that show. Is I went out, Obviously, I went out for a walk uh, afterwards just to kind of clear your head. When you take like a, a solid loss, especially one that's like a TKO, um, you want to go clear your head afterwards. And so that's, that's what I did for at least a little bit or tried to, because I had to do social media for our own stuff. I would the like to point out them. though, that you do enjoy taking those walks in general. Also, this isn't like no, you absolutely. felt so bad that you just all of a sudden felt like taking a walk out of the blue. You actually do walks. Anyways. Yeah, no, no, no. It's these, these things legitimately keep me sane. Um, I do not, I, I stay sane, like going out and getting fresh air, especially while the weather is good. And when I say good, I mean, I know it's hot in Texas, but still. Um, here's the th- While I was out thinking about this, though, I, I thought about, like, what's the way to positively spin uh, losing? And not only losing, but losing by TKO, losing to this extent. And I believe the way to spin that is now people are going to underestimate me which is a really dumb thing to do with someone who is invested into this as I am. It's a matter of you think based on this match, you're going to have a hold of what I'm capable of doing. And buddy, you haven't even seen me study yet. So if you think that this is the, the gentleman, the Chris Adams that you're going to get, Next go around, I feel very terrible for whoever they put me up against because they're going to get creamed. Man, uh, if y'all are watching this and uh, you don't quite know exactly what we're talking about, uh, we over here on the Cine Fanatics have a huge love for the movie trivia showdown. It is movie trivia like wrestling with storylines, but it's a bunch of people like basically sitting at a table answering movie trivia questions. Uh, this year, they have started the First Class League, which is a developmental league, much like the NXT of WWE, if y'all are familiar with that. Uh, this is a place where you go where you want to show what your skills are, but also develop those skills that are needed to fully participate in the Schmodown, whether it's uh, really working on your movie trivia recall or maybe character work that you really need to hit home. This is the place that you do it. Both myself and my brother are a part of this first class league. It's quite a pleasure being a part of the first class of the first class league. Um yeah, I know. You said that over there. I'm just re-enunciating it because I completely agree with you 100%. It's it, it's nice to be a part of that first class. Um, so that's what we're talking about is he had a match today, and this is the post-match blues <laughs> for the most part. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, you walk away. I've had a loss already. Um mm-hmm. And like even in my first my first match I won, uh, there was stuff that I learned in my first match that I used in my second match. I still lost my second match, uh, which I feel like for the most part that was just I was I, I was just outskilled. I would say for the most part, there's a couple of things I could have done a little bit better, but you you were out experienced. Yeah, that's that's what I would say out experienced. Um, but yeah. That- at, that that for you really was a matter of you just went up against somebody who had a couple years more experience in the game than you did. That's that's what that is. Yeah. Um, now for me, I mean, obviously I'm going up against Travis. He just, I mean, we'll obviously get into thoughts during the replay whenever that happens. But uh, 
it's I expected him to come. I expected him to come with knowledge to the table. I I knew that he was he was going to come, you know, to the game and show up, you know, and play the way he played. So for me, it was it was always a toss up as to either one of us could win this match. It's just going to depend on what questions we get and really what frame of mind I'm in. And you know, life has been a little a little stressful lately. So it's it's that's that's how the game that's that's how it goes. Mm-hmm. It just sucks that like you, yeah, it, it's a TKO because like I don't mind losing. Losing is a is a fact of the game. Everyone loses. Everyone loses a match at some point. A TKO is like salt in the wound type of TK a TKO. I'm like, I'm glad it's not a KO, but a TKO is still salt in the wound. It's still like that's that is part of my legacy now is I got TKO'd. Mm-hmm. So you own it and you just use it to fuel. Well, for next time. so I mean, if if you really want a, a good spin on this, this is the way I would think about it. If I got TKO'd or KO'd, like it's nice that that's a part of my legacy, as you as you so put it. Yep. But now, now I'm going to be championship level contender. I'm going to be one of these people, and uh, again, I'm going to quote from our. our mentioned competitors from the Schmodown. I'm going to be a Dan Merle. I'm going to be a John Roca, Ben Bateman, William Bibiani, like all the champions that have held at least the singles belt in the Schmodown by Lola. Sorry. <laughs> She's like, pay attention to me. Uh, I'm going to be them. And I have this KO or TKO in my history. I went from that. That's where I started. Here's how it's going. That's that's exactly that is like a beautiful story in my opinion. That's how I feel like this should go. Yeah. Yep. That's I mean that's that's what I'm saying. You guys, uh, everyone's gonna look at that. I'm sure some of the other mm-hmm. after shows out there will will say, you know, man, he just he just really whiffed it there, or they'll say whatever they want to say. Uh, people on the different social media sites will say whatever they want to say. And everybody will underestimate me, and that's perfectly fine. That's the nature of the game. People lose and they get underestimated. But then they come back, and knowing now the degree at which I'm able to study and knowing the format and how to how to properly study, because uh, there's definitely some more techniques that I've picked up since my last match. Um, dang, like I'm gonna be I'm gonna be dangerous next time. I really am. Yeah. I hope so. That'd be awesome. Yep. Um, so like Vernon's saying here, in all seriousness, very proud of you for taking a shot, being a part of the FCL. Every one of the competitors have given Vernon reason to start his own content. So yep. thank you for playing. Uh, now back to the Assery. What is the Assery? Is that like a place you go visit? Like, <laughs> is that like the greenery, like a greenhouse? Like, is that where the... Anyways, yeah, whatever. It's where the asses grow. It's where the asses grow. <laughs> it's my bedroom. <laughs> I guess. Save me from this joke. Just somebody say something. <laughs> something. <laughs> oh, good hey, job. Let's do something else. Yeah. Um, there was something else I was thinking too, and I forgot what it was. Assery. It had nothing to do with Assery. I got it. Um, anyways. Yeah. Yeah, that's, 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 that's going to be awesome to see. Anyways, uh, we will talk more about this FCL match. We will deep dive a lot more on the FCL replay. So again, join Patreon at the due tier, $5 due tier. You'll be able to see that as of right now will be Thursday night. So. If you enjoyed the FCL, you're going to enjoy the replay a lot more. So uh, I won't. Eh, I know. <laughs> um, let's get into let's get into some movie news. Uh, typically, we would dive into the box office numbers first, but I feel like that's probably like a main part of what we're going to be talking about tonight. So the only other thing that I've that I would say we want to bring up uh, is like last week we were talking about how you've got, uh, was it transformer, the new transformers movie that's coming out. It's going to involve the uh, like beast wars characters. 
Um, they announced that Ron Perlman is going to be doing the voice of Optimus Primal in it. I like this. Ron Perlman. Ron Perlman's done a lot of voices before, but he's also got that. He's got that look that he. You could look at him and probably see Optimus Primal just in his face. Thoughts. He's very mechanical looking. Yeah. Um, here's the thing. More primal, but <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, at this juncture, I no longer really care about a Transformers movie. I'll be honest. Uh, Bumblebee was good. It was good, but I never saw last night. I have no intention of watching last night unless for some reason at some point something comes up that forces me to have to watch it, which is a very real possibility considering what we're involved in. Yeah. Uh, unless you're having to participate in a Transformers the last night exhibition match, in which case you're probably very more likely to be like, nah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, I'll pick something different. Um, the, the facts are that the Transformers movies are just kind of now for me. Um, I, I can be quoted as saying that life is too short to watch Transformers willingly. So that's kind of my, my viewpoint, my standpoint on that. So this, this whole Ron Perlman is cast as Optimus Primal. Cool. That's cool for Ron Perlman. Get, get your, get your bread, man. Get that, get that check. Uh, I love that uh, Anthony Ramos is, you know, taking on a lead role in this movie. That's awesome. I want to see him get more roles. I'm glad that he gets to do a big blockbuster, and hopefully that helps him secure even more roles in the future. Get that check. Get that bread. Now, that being said, though, you did like Bumblebee. I did like Bumblebee. Yeah, so this is supposedly going to play off of Bumblebee. The only problem with this one is we don't have uh, Travis Knight, who directed Bumblebee, directing this one this one does have uh steven capel jr who did creed 2 so here's creed, the thing creed 2 was good the thing is is that we're obviously going to go see this movie when it comes out we're going to review it uh, i'm still not going to watch the last night because <laughs> you don't have to <laughs> i don't have to right now uh but we are going to watch this i'm going to give it a fair shake i'm just saying that as of right now any casting announcements, anything they, they talk about in regards to this movie, I, I, I don't care until I'm essentially, one, until I essentially see a trailer. Because I could watch a trailer and be like, whoo, this movie looks like a fun time, actually. They're doing something really cool with this. Um, or until I'm sitting in the theater seat going, all right, they're doing a good job with this. The thing is, is I, I'm, I'm down with Stephen Capel Jr. because uh, I really liked Creed too, So I'm down seeing him you know take on a another big like franchise like this uh get more work in get get your bread get your check essentially but that's as as a whole as a whole me transformers eh. yeah so that being said it's also possible to look at a transformers trailer and go yeah that looks like a fart box <laughs> i mean I think I looked at like the Age of Extinction. I was like, that ju that just does not look good, and I was right. I saw it, and it was not good. And yeah, me too. I have yet to see uh, the last night. Probably won't. Age of Extinction. That's that's the one where uh, they ham fisted a storyline about a dude dating a girl who's like underage or whatever into the story, right? Yeah, and they're like, well, that's what they did in Romeo and Juliet. That's what you, you're you a, didn't you didn't need that in this movie. Yeah, it's like you're in a Transformers movie, so you don't need the nice thing though. If you want, if you want like a positive light on this, is at least that dude who's trying to explain it uh, ended up going to another movie and getting his body shoved into a bear carcass. So that was that was the same guy. You're right. It was wow. the same guy. Yeah. Uh, which I've been in the mood to watch that again for some weird reason. You know how weird it is when you're like, you know what I want to, when I'm in the mood to watch Midsummer. Midsummer. <laughs> I want to watch Midsummer again. Like that was a good movie. I want to watch that. Like, and and le unless your name is Video Drew, that doesn't make any sense to me. Well, I mean, it, okay, you say that just for funsies, but you do realize also it makes sense for me. <laughs> I do like horror movies, so 
even, even like still. some weird like that one was very weird and off the wall i i really liked midsummer i did not like hereditary the other uh ari aster horror movie but i did i loved midsummer and yeah i'm in the mood to watch that again too so anyways <laughs> you know what movie i'm not ever in the mood to watch midsummer that's one of them <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, well whatever uh anyways uh again in in summation i do like rom rom perlman as optimus primal again i don't know beast wars that wasn't like in i was too i guess too old for that cartoon when it came out in the 90s it just wasn't a demographic that was aimed at me at that time so what's the difference between beast wars and what they already did in age of extinction where they had the dinosaur I guess so, that, that was the Dinobots, right? Be, yeah, be, Beast Wars is a whole nother set of Transformers. It is like, uh, for Animals. all sorts of purposes, yeah. Forget the Transformers that turn into vehicles. These are Transformers that turn into animals. Uh, the ones in Age of Extinction were the Dinobots that were a part of the original Transformers. So like Grimlock and, yeah. But are they like turning into like actual animals? Are we looking at mechanical animals? Uh, yeah, it was like a mechanical animal, from what I could tell. The cartoon was done in the uh, the same computer generated animation that uh, reboot. If y'all remember reboot from back in the nineties, the main the mainframe computer animation. It's one of like the uh, I think reboot actually was the first computer animated, fully computer animated uh, cartoons uh, that was ever made. Uh, and that that was coming off of like say Pixar doing computer animation for like Toy Story and uh, Disney has like a little bit of computer animation for their movies like the Cave Aladdin. of Wonders your favorite Cave of Wonders from Aladdin <laughs> yeah so uh, yeah stuff like that so that's what Beast Wars was the same uh, mainframe computer animation as gotcha. reboot yep. Anyways, uh, let's talk about some Fast and Furious. Uh, and we're about 40 minutes into this, so we're going to talk about it very fast and very furious. You can pump up that number while you're at that. Uh, while you do that, to correct our banner down at the bottom, uh, I am going to vamp a little. While vamping, if y'all have any questions, comments, again, streamlabs.com slash cinefanax. If you just feel, like, sad that someone on this team lost a match today you can make them feel a little bit better with uh something that involves a dollar sign if you have any questions comments anything else like that that's uh, a true fact th that would make him feel better because he wants to pay rent <laughs> so uh yeah streamlabs.com slash cinefanax that would be great yep um so, yeah, let's talk about this box office numbers because I think this is, even though we have other stuff to talk about as far as Fast and Furious goes, I think this is the biggest one and the one, the second I saw this story, I was like, oh, man, this is so awesome. This is going to be a lot of fun to talk about. How's the box office from this weekend uh, surrounding F9? Uh, it's huge. Let me pull up some numbers real quick. It is essentially let's put it this way we're talking about what was what was the box office like pre pre-covid um you know you're looking at blockbuster movies doing you know anywhere between 60 to 90 million dollars in their opening weekend if we can remember that far guys i know pre-covid was like whew, man that's ancient history at this point i think but, on average on average big movies would pull in 60 to 90 million opening weekend if you're like the big like infinity war in game you're clearly you're going to pass 100 100 mil easily yeah domestically so, so domestically speaking let's see today is tuesday so i got a little bit added here because it's not we're not like fresh off the weekend uh domestically F9 is destroying the box office in a way that we have only seen prior to pandemic. And honestly, not even prior to the pandemic, because we're, if you're looking at movies like uh, Bad Boys 3 and Birds of Prey that came out, you know, before the whole shutdown and, and quarantine stuff started, uh, F9 is doing even better than those movies. Mm -hmm. So... Right now, we're looking at a domestic box office of about 76 million. 
for F9. Um, and that's that's a great number. That's a great number to to see right now. Because prior to that, we've been looking at movies that have been doing maybe 13, anywhere between 13 to 20 million at best uh, opening in the in the box office in the actual like theatrical releases. I know some of these movies we've been talking about have like day and date releases on, you know, HBO Max or Disney Plus with the premium access and all that. But to be able to see F9 uh, hit theaters and do this this kind of damage essentially to the box office is very reassuring about the kind of return that we can see theaters making now going into the rest of this year. Uh, uh, yeah. I'll say if you want to put it in perspective, do you have the, the numbers of, to compare it to? Uh, not right off the bat right here. Uh, I know oh, that. I, it, oh, you got them. Okay. I do. Uh, it is the largest box office debut since 2019's Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. That's uh, insane. That's crazy. Uh, this, uh, this is even more crazy. Crazier? Whatever. Sure. Uh, the opening for this, again, like this movie hit like what? Like 70 million just in just the weekend was larger than the opening weekend for Hobbs and Shaw, which was 60 million and did not have a pandemic and did not have a pandemic that it was coming off of off of that. That's crazy. The eighth, yep. the eighth movie in this series, uh, fate of the furious, uh, in total in, uh, 2017, when it came out in total, it made domestically, 98 million in the box office. This made 70 million in one weekend at the end of a pandemic. There's no, there's no way that FA only made 90 something million in its total run in the domestic box office. That's not correct. Um, oh, it may, okay. No, it that's could, a bomb. It, no. That's a failure. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, it may be 98 million in opening weekend. This thing I'm looking yeah. at is not being specific with it. That does yeah, make no. more sense that it would make 98 yeah. million opening weekend. Yeah. There's but, no way. Cause that's a, that movie costs almost 200 million to make. Probably F nine has made 405 million around the world internationally. Yeah, it is. Well, so the thing to keep in mind there, the, the reason why that number is so high is it's also been out for about a month uh, worldwide also, which mm -hmm. is crazy to me because I know that while America was one of the countries that was suffering the worst during the pandemic, uh, it has quickly risen to being able to reopen uh, safely in many, many areas across the country now. And now there's other areas across the globe that are still suffering pretty bad. Um, I know that vaccines are starting to make their way to other countries and, and whatnot, and that's great to see. But the fact that this movie did... This, <laughs> sorry, I just had that in my head. This movie. The movie. Movies. The fact that this movie did as much as it has over the last month across the world is... Uh, for those of us who like really enjoy movies, I love talk about movie, talking about movies, I love going to see movies, I love making movies, yeah, <laughs> movies. Um, this is this is a wonderful thing to see. It really is. Uh, hopefully, you know, across the world, people are actually able to see these movies safely. But the fact that you know we are seeing these numbers is it's it brings a tear to my. It's a beautiful thing to see, and I think it only it only bodes well for what we're going to see coming out the rest of this year, because we've got a ton of movies coming out this year that should have come out last year. This yeah. year is stacked. Uh, so the other thing I want to point out as far as like the box office numbers for F nine, their budget was a little over 200 million. Now that's, that's just the budget involved in making the movie that has nothing to do with the budget involved with the marketing. Uh, which I've mentioned a lot of times on here. The marketing for F9 is one of the things I was really focused on. If y'all remember, yeah. back in January of 2020, they actually put together a two-hour long concert uh, to promote just releasing the trailer. 
They got all the stars there. Uh, Maria Menounos is there. They got like Ludacris performing. They had uh, uh, what well, they did the song from uh, Furious Seven. Yep. Uh, with Whoa. what's his face and what's his face? Yeah. Uh, Cardi B did a a, a performance. So I mean, they had like a full on concert, all about releasing the trailer. And then within like days of the trailer release, they're like, ah, we're gonna push this back (laughs) a year, a a year. Like that is an entire massive amount of marketing budget just blown. So guaranteed that that was a good couple of million easily just to be able to do that. And it's not saying that the world as a large, when the pandemic hit, completely forgot about Fast and Furious. Like we all knew Fast and Furious was still coming. It's one of those movies that you don't forget about. Mm-hmm. It's just that it sucks that they went that deep into the marketing and all for nothing because it came out the year later. And not only that, they pushed it even further, still past the year later mark. Uh, uh, you said a movie you don't forget that like oh like Ghostbusters Afterlife oh yeah that's right oh yeah there's still another Ghostbusters movie coming out did y'all forget that about is, that one that yeah. movie is coming out yeah um anyways so that's impressive uh and I actually I really love the F9 like I uh, me personally I uh, as much as I love the Fast and Furious franchise I could have I would have liked to have seen like this kind of thing to happen to say like in the heights yep and like in the heights be the movie that welcomes everyone back to the box office uh which i mean they've gotten really good reviews it has a very high uh rotten tomato score uh but in the heights also had the benefit of being released on hbo max so it's going to be kind of hard with all those warner brothers releases yeah and it it's it definitely doesn't have the legs either i mean i'm looking at the rest of the uh the rest of the box office right now, you got A Quiet Place Part 2, uh, Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard, uh, you know, Cruella, Conjuring, um, you got In the Heights. You know, all these movies are doing, you know, a couple million. They're all doing less than 10 million now each each uh, weekend. So it's, you know, you, you're basically if anybody went to go see a movie this last weekend, a movie. This last weekend, they went to see uh, F9. F9. <laughs> yeah. Um, coming off of that real quick, I know we were going to talk about a little bit more about Fast and Furious, but uh, this kind of reminded me. Uh, I read a thing about the Directors Guild of America. They're they're now changing like what their rules for being able to honor movies uh coming up now that they've had to adjust it for the pandemic last year they're readjusting it now that we're coming out uh so their ruling now is that a movie must play for seven consecutive days in a theater before it is allowed to be shown in any other venue or platform meaning Hmm. all of those movies on hbo max including dune are not going to qualify Look who it is. Look who it is. Yes, sir. We're talking about the family. Welcome, John Knight. How are you doing? How you doing, brother? Yeah. Good to see you. Uh, if you want to stick around, we're going to continue talking about the family. Oh, yeah. We're talking about we're, we're talking about the family here. And movies. And <laughs> movies. <laughs> I see, and here's the thing. Uh, if you want to talk about that real quick, was that was that a like that clip of Vin Diesel talking about the movies? Was that a thing before SNL made fun of it, or did the SNL thing really come out first? Because I can't. The I fact don't know that, what the fact that it's clipped out by itself. Well, no. Okay, so there was there was that sketch from SNL where uh, what's yeah. his face was playing Vin Diesel talking about the movies and doing that like throughout the whole sketch. Yeah, uh, and then later on, I saw the a video of Vin Diesel talking about "Welcome Back to the Movies," and he said it the same exact way. And I'm like, okay, that's hilarious because that's exactly how the sketch was going. But which one actually came first? The the sketch was. I mean, SNL is always doing sketch comedy off of something. They're always parodying something. So the actual Vin Diesel doing yeah. that came yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw. Yeah, I, I, I saw get it that. first. I, I, I get that, but what I'm, I'm answering your is, question. What, no, what I'm asking though, what I'm wondering is, did they just have him playing Vin Diesel 
acting like that. And it just so happened to be the way Vin Diesel says movies anyways. And yeah. that, like, they just so happened to just nail it <laughs> like that. The SNL sketch came first. And then what are you doing? The movies. Yeah. The movies. The movies. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so I, I, yeah, when I saw like Vin Diesel actually doing that, I thought back to the SNL. I was like, "That's exactly how they did it. That's amazing." I, I, I really didn't. I couldn't tell which one actually came first. That actually would have been funny if the SNL one came first. No, I didn't. It, the Vin Diesel doing it came first. Yeah, I can't believe we spent that much time talking about that. Um, <laughs> the, the point. The point is, is that. Uh, we're back. We're we're back in the theaters. We got movies again, and I love that. Uh, I love that Fast and Furious. I this is exactly what I predicted. I predicted Fast and Furious was going to be the one to do this. That is a tried and true franchise at this point. I mean, you don't you don't get to the ninth one with plans to make a few more here, and not uh, and and not do big in the box office. I mean, they they yeah. really did plan that out properly in terms of when to push it back uh effectively like all right cool vaccines are out everybody can go back to the theater it just uh, for whatever you want to say about the movie whether some people think it's ridiculous or not it's fast and furious it's fun it's a ton of fun to see and i'm really glad that it's it's, kind of com- ushering everybody it's back. a comfort food movie like yeah. you uh, i mean again our our review of it, our our spoiler free review is up on this channel. But yeah, this movie's absurd and crazy, and it's exactly what you want out of a Fast and Furious movie. I mean, you go for Thanksgiving dinner, you expect the turkey, the stuffing, the cranberry sauce. It's it's what you expect. It's that level of comfort, and it hit it. It just yeah, kind of like what uh. Max was saying over on let's get ready to talk schmo down that it was a lot of eye rolling. I kind of agree with that. Like sitting in the theater, I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, but that's the fun. <laughs> it was fun. But I'm that's like, the fun no, of it. No, <laughs> this is so dumb. <laughs> but anyway, uh, speaking of the fact that there's potentially more coming, there's another news story you got there, right? Yeah, so they announced that, of course, we knew that there's going to be a Fast and Furious 10 and 11. Uh, what I'm trying to figure out is, like, I, I've seen in a couple places they're referring to it as, like, 10 and 11. Some of them are referring to it as Fast and Furious 10 Part 1 and 10 Part 2. I That sounds like a 10 and 11 to me, so yeah. I don't know. Uh, but they both will be filming back-to-back starting in January. Um, this is nice. It's giving a little bit more breathing room for the pandemic to be fully done, hopefully, Mm -hmm. um, and then allowing them that ability to really knock out this filming. And we've seen when they when movies have been made and filmed back to back, uh, they usually do a pretty decent job. Now, uh, content wise of the movie, that's questionable, say like uh, Matrix Reloaded and Matrix Revolutions. We're filmed back to back, but everyone's just like, eh, on the story. Uh, but it's nice that you got everyone there on the same page to film all at once. Yeah. Uh, so like this, you're going to have both both of these movies filmed back to back. I think they did that with Avengers as well. Uh, Infinity War and Endgame were filmed back to back. Those were gorgeous movies. <laughs> they did that. I, I believe uh, Guillermo did... Um, not Guillermo. <laughs> I said that. Schmodown, my, my brain's fried. Uh, Peter Jackson did that with the pretty Lord much all Rings. three Lord of the Rings movies and almost yep. nearly all three Hobbit movies too. So uh, it, there is, there's precedent for it being done and there being good movies to come out of it. Uh, what I'm more interested in is like the logistical side of this I think it makes a lot of sense to shoot 10 and 11 or 10 part one and part two, whatever you want to call it. I think it makes uh, sense to do it this way because this franchise has been going for about 20 years, literally about 20 years. I feel old. Yeah. That means (laughs) you go back, you watch the first one and you see how old uh, say Vin Diesel and uh, Michelle Rodriguez and Jordana Brewster were in that first one. Now you look at them now there's about 20 years of age that's been put on them. 
and they're still doing these stunts. Now, obviously there's stunt people doing them and there's CGI and all that. That's fine. But they're still putting themselves out there physically for these movies. And, uh, it makes a lot of sense given how long this franchise has been going. Let's just knock the other two back to back. Just knock it right out. That way we don't have to carry this on further. We don't have to, you know, be doing this 30 years down the road when, you know, you got fast and furious 63 or whatever. And they're all literally 63, you know, (laughs) math doesn't add up there, but I don't care. Uh, Regardless, it makes a lot of sense to shoot these back to back. And I think, I think the fact that they are, they're able to finish this franchise out on their terms and say like, this is it. We're doing these two movies and that's it for, you know, at least the main franchise. Uh, I think that's, I think that's great. Uh, I do think that it, as much as I love these movies, I do think it's time that we put a nice little bow on it and call it a day because uh, just for that reason, I, I need these creators to be able to, to be able to end it on their on their terms, I don't. We don't. We don't want to see this franchise speeding away from from uh-huh. them and kind of getting away from 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 you know what they want to do with it. So I imagine you just said that we want to put a bow on it and see it end, and then you have like John Knight over here is like, all right, I don't want to listen to the negativity from this channel. I don't, <laughs> he's the type of person that strikes me that he doesn't ever want to see this franchise and just keep it going. <laughs> So yeah. that's what uh, I'm saying though. You, you gotta, you gotta end it on your terms though. Don't just let yeah. it, don't let everybody age out of the, out of the roles or like le- letting the story get stagnant. Um, yeah. if, if for a good comparison, let's bring up our favorite TV show scrubs. They ended it on their terms and then some executive is like, Oh, let's do another season. And they're like, no, you ended it perfectly. It was one of the most perfect uh, series finale for a TV show. And if y'all know anything about like series finales for TV shows, getting a perfect one is hard. It is yeah. super hard to achieve. And they did that with this. And then they made another season. Sort yep. of, I guess. Don't, I, don't I, believe I, it. I doubt it. Yeah, don't believe eh, it. whatever. Um. Yeah, so... Yeah, being able to see them... Uh, put a nice bow on the end of this that would be that would be great yeah um (laughs) that being said then they brought up the idea of let's make a fast and furious musical now i'm guessing that this is just someone just like throwing like random ideas out there like you've been to outer space there's that whole talk about a fast and furious crossover with jurassic park let's make a fast and furious musical so <laughs> like what, I drive what would you fast, do? I drive a 10 second car, I drive a quarter mile at a time. What they need to do though is like it needs to be a 10 second song. <laughs> That's just what a was. 10 second song. Yeah, 10 second song for a 10 second vehicle. Uh wake up and smell the NOS. That would be a good one. He's um, a cop. He's a cop. I'm telling you, he's a cop. Listen to me, he's a cop. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the uh, the Vince theme song. <laughs> Every time Vince walks out on stage, that's what you hear. <laughs> the Buster came back and got me. Where were you? The Buster came back and got me. <laughs> we'll see these cars defying gravity. <laughs> wow. You can drink this Corona. It's Vince's. <laughs> But I mean, you'll have you have something like that. Uh, like I, the thing, like I kind of want to hear Vin Diesel do a musical. I do too, actually. <laughs> it's not gonna sound good. I doubt he has like a serious singing voice, but uh, like <laughs> it would be all kinds of fun. <laughs> I mean, have um, you not heard his singing voice? Have you not heard? Like he he's put out some music and it's like, hey, this is awful, but it's also kind of it's also kind of jammy. He has a type of voice that I feel like he needs to like sing like like ultra like slow jams, and that's what kind of like helps soothe you and put you to sleep at night. Let's sing about family or something like that. I can't I can't do that, but. <laughs> 
Yeah, so I'm still locked out, but I mean, I have no need to go over there. I have my own bedroom too. Oh so. yeah, yeah. I haven't unlocked the door yet. <laughs> Y'all need to go watch the "Let's Get Ready to Talk Schmodowns" uh, gold standard from tonight. Uh, guest starring uh, this one over here uh, to see what the locked door and all this is about. Uh, <laughs> if you're fascinated by the idea of my door being locked, then that's oof, where that's you find out right there. Unlock the secrets of the locked door. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so a Fast and Furious musical. Uh, here's the thing: like, I I love musicals. I am game for a Fast and Furious musical. It's probably gonna sound like crap. I'm just gonna put it out there. It will be bad, but uh, I'm still game for it. And it will probably be bad, but I'll probably still rock the album like on Spotify or something at least in my car on the way to work, driving Fast and Furious down the highway. Uh, while listening to it so anyways uh any other thoughts about the uh oh, yeah that's right that's right Vin Diesel that. did do a song hey i was gonna say hi to you I was gonna say hi, but you turned around and walked away. I don't know you, but I feel like I do. That's freaking cat. It's bad, but it's good. It's I don't know. I can't explain it. It's it's got good vibes, but it's (laughs) ah, yeah, hi, yeah. (laughs) I still like our our cars are defying gravity. That's great. (laughs) They're flying up in the air and Tarzaning off the cliff. And Brian, you hit the nose too soon. You couldn't control your car. <laughs> you think it was it? You had me. You didn't even have your car. Uh, like I said, we hungry. Yeah. Anyways, uh, anything else in regards to Fast and Furious you feel like we need to talk about? I'm I I'm like happy. I'm happy they're going to keep up with uh, ten and eleven or ten part one, ten part two. I, I like the movies. The um, movies, yeah. What I'm interested though is what what are they planning on doing with uh, Hobbs and Shaw? Are they are they still uh, are they still going to do another another Hobbs and Shaw or are we kind of feeling like yeah you know that was good that one was good. Uh, I think I read somewhere that uh, that they are going to bring back Hobbs and Shaw into the main the main movies again. Yeah, this is just as long as Dwayne Johnson and uh, Vin Diesel can get along. Well, to be fair, I mean, no, no spoilers, but we see that there's potential for them to find a way to bring at least one of those characters, if not both of them back. So just just saying. Uh, So, yeah, uh, I have a Fast and Furious question. Which film does Kurt Russell debut as Mr. Nobody? Uh, I would argue that he does debut in part six. You just don't see him, but he is there. Now, the problem with that argument is you could use that same argument to say he also debuted in fast five and Tokyo drift. Vernon, the next thing that comes out of your mouth onto that keyboard and by comes out of your mouth, I mean through your fingertips as you type, Better be a really good reason as to why I don't take your wrench away right now. <laughs> Looking for a really good reason. We just got a stream labs from all of the chat. <laughs> Although if all of the chat wants to send in a stream labs, that's probably a good idea at this point. <laughs> yeah, if all the chat just wants to drop something in, all the chat might be able to save Vernon's wrench. Wrench. <laughs> and that's just nice for all of the chat to do. Y'all are doing yeah. a, a great service there for, for one person. It would because really you know be- Ver- Vernon is a good person and he deserves that. So it's yeah, it's just really great for all of the chat to just band together like that. Yeah. And just, just do that for Vernon. That'd be that'd be a, a swell, a wonderful thought for all of the chat to do. Yeah. So uh I'll go ahead and say thank you to all of the chat for y'all's generosity there ahead of time. Um, do we have anything else we want to cover before we start wrapping this up? Um, not a whole lot. I mean, obviously, like we did plugs before, we'll do a few more plugs here. But uh, 
How about the How world's about? longest zip line? Uh, I got yeah. here's so here's the thing. I kind of want to ride that. <laughs> uh, it looks like fun. I've been yeah. zip lining. Zip lining is a ton of fun. Uh, when I did zip lining for, funny enough, I did it for a, a buddy's bachelor party. Uh, that was an absolute blast. I want to go again. It was nerve wracking. Like, obviously, there's there's a degree of like, I'm being up that high. I'm attached to a cable, and I'm just soaring over a bunch of trees. And if I fall. <laughs> I'm gonna get mangled pretty pretty badly. Oh, there's uh, trees that catch your fall. If nothing else, it could be like Fast and Furious, and a really soft car will catch you. <laughs> no, oh, a nice cushiony car to fall on. One can only hope that a, a car would be there, downy soft, uh, to catch me. Charmin soft. It's, it's Charmin. Is the reference we made, or I made? <laughs> Sure, I was making a different reference then. Either way, cars aren't soft unless you live in the <laughs> Fast and Furious. <laughs> they are in Fast and Furious. <laughs> How many people land on them at all in, in per movie? Look, Amber, I don't need judgment. There is a difference between zip lining and roller coasters. I'm not gonna sit here and take the time to explain it right now, but no, I don't like roller coasters, but I am down for more zip lining. Uh, depending on where it's at. Yeah, I was going to say, if we're talking about like zip lining like from the tops of the trees in the Amazon jungle, no, <laughs> I'm not doing that. If we're talking about like a it's zip line, yeah, if we're talking about a zip line going from like one neighbor's house to another neighbor's house or whatever, where like by the time I'm actually, my full weight is on the zip line, I'm probably only like two, three feet above the ground. But I'm all for it. Yeah. So, we got a uh, stream lab. Oh yeah, from guess who? All of the all chat. of the chat. Nice of them. Check out Chris Adams playing a game he can win, <laughs> except for shooting Mario out of a cannon to get a star for three rings of coins. Over at Twitch.tv/slash Chris Adams MLP. Really, really doing the hard sell there. All of the chat. Appreciate that <laughs> plug right there. Um. I'm not playing Mario right now over on Twitch. I'm actually in the Pokemon world, which is a lot of fun and is a lot uh, frus less frustrating than Mario 64 was. Um, AJ says on Streamlab also, AJ Lancaster. Haven't seen your match yet, Chris, but love the gentleman gimmick. Checking it out tomorrow. Good luck with future matches. AJ, I hope you're not disappointed <laughs> when you watch it. <laughs> because i was <laughs> i actually uh, like here's the thing like nice nice timing for that i actually wasn't disappointed i thought you did a really good job uh there was a lot of stuff in there i think you did a phenomenal job with answering some of those questions uh i was uh i was watching it while at work like yeah like i was doing like a full-on fist pump at my desk and management walking around going the hell are you doing <laughs> so <laughs> cat i just want to be clear i'm glad you're here that's fine <laughs> perfectly fine yeah because if all of the chat would also go over and join you on twitch.tv slash chris adams mlp that would be great also <laughs> yeah, and by all the chat again. i actually mean like all of the chat not just yeah. the one person maybe, who submits as all of the chat. Maybe I'll uh, I'll I'll stream again here pretty soon. It's it's not like a uh, I've got another match to prepare for right now. So, <laughs> well, no, because it would be I have another match to prepare for, and you're just gonna take it, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. The truth is, you need to learn to take your phone with you when you go to the bathroom. Just at least leave it in your pocket. Don't you just don't leave your phone laying around with other people in the room. I mean, I was just going pee. I don't need to take my phone for that. I don't want to be like sitting there playing on my phone and it falls in the toilet. Now, if I'm doing anything else in the bathroom, of course the phone goes with me easily. That goes without saying because it's what we all do. Let's be honest. Look, look honestly, welcome to all the I'm saying. To the all I'm saying fanatics. is, yeah, that's a joke. I'm <laughs> I'm glad I was trying to interrupt. Uh, all I'm saying is, you learned your lesson. Oh yeah. Yeah, my phone will always be with me, and I'm changing my fingerprints. 
uh, whenever we yeah, nice, whenever we, uh, <laughs> whenever we do the replay of that match, uh, I want to actually, cause, cause I don't know like how much of it did you actually get to watch all of it? Okay. Do you know if you would have beaten him based on the questions given? Uh, <laughs> it's kind of a weird position to be put in because what am I supposed to do? Like, yeah, I would have beat him. Uh, yes, I actually would have beat him. Um, only up till when I lost. I mean, again, it's a TKO. Yeah, so. yeah. No, I, I got uh, other than what did I say? Other than the uh, the Jimmy Fallon, uh, the fever pitch. I I couldn't quite pull the that title either. Uh, other other than that, all the other questions you got and all the questions he got, I knew. Now, of course, we're back to like what we were talking about earlier. Like, cool. It's simple for you to say that when you're not actually playing it, but. <laughs> Uh, there was like at the end, uh, I I put in the uh, I would have gotten Stargate. Oh yeah, easily. Because uh, when they asked that question, I was sitting there like laughing, like ha ha, that's good. Uh, for those of y'all who don't know, we did a study session, and Stargate was a part of that that study session. So hey, that's save it for the replay. <laughs> well, save we'll, we'll replay. Di- we are going to dive more into that, but I mean, we keep jo- uh, joking about Stargate, and people don't know why we are focused so much just on Stargate. So, can't give this uh, stuff away for free, man. We got a five dollar tier, guys. Jump on so, uh, Patreon. Jump on Patreon. You'll hear all that. There's a lot of other stuff that we could deep dive on. That's just a taste of it. Uh, the FCL replay is going to be a lot of fun. Hop on that five dollar tier on Patreon.com. It's going to be great. So. Cam says, I want Chris to shake it off, be kind to himself, and sleep well. Cam, I will be sleeping well tonight. I am exhausted. Yeah. The past couple of days of just all studying all the time, and then basically, oof, uh, I'm hungry. Uh, basically being on camera. I think I heard that much, one. You can, right. That, was, that one was a, that was a loud one. Um, Lola heard that one. She thought it was like an animal, so she's climbing up here going, what's going on? Uh, yeah, it was so loud that Lola heard it through your earbuds. Um, oh, yeah. My eardrums are busted. Uh, I'll be kind to myself. Uh, everybody takes it hard whenever they when they have their first loss, but you know, you just yeah, you're gonna. It's we're gonna shake it off. We'll be fine. The royal we. Yeah. Um. Anyways, I think that's gonna do it for tonight. Let's wrap this thing up. Uh, let's do some plugs of stuff that we've got coming up again. Of course, like we were saying at the $5 tier. Yeah. Uh, that's by design, Vernon. That's by design. (laughs) At the $5 tier, we will be doing the FCL replay this coming Thursday, pending my brother is feeling good after getting his second shot. Uh, but that'll be Thursday night. Uh, if you're at the $5, the due tier on our Patreon, you will have access to this. It's going to be a lot of fun. That's going to be Thursday night at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. Um, also, uh, say we have the Space Jam watch along for patrons. That will be later on in July. Also, at the $5 uh, tier. Yeah, tomorrow night will be Loki episode four. I'm going to change this graphic before tomorrow, uh, but it will be Loki episode four breakdown. It will be at least me and Miss Kelsey Kirkland uh, doing that breakdown. My brother, again, if he's feeling good after getting a shot tomorrow, will be a part of that <laughs> as well. I'll, I might be there and I might be like this. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I liked it. It was really good. You're doing the Bad Batch uh, Breakdown, Episodes 9 and 10 with Adam Witt this coming Saturday, the 3rd yes. of July. Yes, sir. And then, and then on Monday, the 5th of July, we will be doing a public watch-along of Captain America, the First Avenger, to celebrate both Black Widow coming out and the day after July 4th. So go go celebrate July 4th with your, with your actual friends and family. And then on July 5th, come celebrate July 4th with us here on Cinefanatics. It will be I, public watch along. You don't have to be a part of the Patreon, although we'll probably tell you to join the Patreon at least 20 times during that stream. I got to Yeah, that is actually true. Hey, you're getting the watch along for free this week. Come join the Patreon. You get more of those every month. Um, I want to remark on just how fancy it is that we're, we, so we've been watching uh, MCU movies in the uh, Patreon watch alongs, you know, one every now and then. Not obviously each and every month, but it just so happened that we're at the point 
in our MCU watch along where Captain America is the next one to watch. And it's just so convenient that it happened with Black Widow and July and 4th. And July 4th. And I don't know. Guys, sometimes you just got to look for the silver lining in the pandemic cloud that ended up letting this happen for us. Yeah, because we're not that good at planning. <laughs> it's the smallest silver lining possible for a pandemic cloud. Good Lord. Yeah. Uh, that being said, like I said, I am still working on a Fast and Furious ranking, including F9. That should hopefully be out in the next day or two. I am eager to uh, see what... Wow, this chat's been going pretty good. Uh, I'm eager to see what John Knight has to say about our uh, our ranking once that comes Ooh. out. So if you're still watching, John, make sure you let us know what you think of uh, of our rank there. Uh, uh, I'll give you a spoiler, John. Uh, we don't rank Tokyo Drift as high as some other people for some reason do. Yeah. Um, and again, for Fast and Furious, our spoiler-free review of F9 is on this channel right now. Make sure you go check that out. We also have trailer reactions for Halloween Kills and the latest uh, Shang-Chi trailer that uh, dropped this past week. So go check those out as well. Uh, anyways, yeah, uh, I think that's going to do it for tonight. So again, make sure you follow us on Patreon. If you join the Patreon, even at just $1, you'll be able to join us on the Discord, building a movie-loving community over there. So hop on there. Uh, I will give a shout-out to Vernon, who has been running a uh, question of the day on there. That has been a lot of fun. Uh, sometimes I'm able to like answer them and sometimes I get like really stumped about it. So uh, a lot of the, a lot of fun questions that he's been uh, cranking out over there. We have a lot of fun with some stuff on the discord. So make sure you hop on that. At least at the dollar, you'll get that benefit. Again, the $5 gets you the uh, movie watch along, which is going to be space jam in July. And then you also get the FCL replay. And then make sure you follow us at Twitter at CineFanatics MLP. Of course, Robert Adams MLP, Chris Adams MLP on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterbox for both of us. Yep. So if you want to see what we're seeing, follow us on Letterbox. And uh, just like uh, Vernon said earlier, sorry, excuse me. I say Vernon, I meant all of the chat uh, when they sent in their Streamlabs earlier said, uh, you can follow me over at twitch.tv slash Chris Adams MLP branding. Uh, I am going through Pokemon Shield right now on there. I'm hoping to build a pretty solid subscriber base of consistent viewers over there because I want to start playing community games like Jatbox and Among Us. I know Among Us is pretty much dead. I don't care. I still want to play it anyway. So mm -hmm. as many people want to be subscribers over there, you, uh, I will be giving access to the Discord also for anybody who subscribes to me on Twitch. So that is something to keep in mind. Uh, and something I need to work on now that I don't have to prepare for another match for a little bit. So, yeah, follow me over there, sub over there, super helpful. All of it really, 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 really helps right now. Really helps right now. So, anyways, uh, thanks to all of y'all in the chat watching this. Thank you for being here while we're doing this live. Or if you're watching this on a replay, make sure you comment your thoughts, feelings, and opinions down below and also make sure you drop us a like hit that like button because you like what we did you're watching us therefore you like us that's the way the world works uh also make sure you share any of our content with your friends and family so they can content. come over and content yeah i know I, words whatever uh, share our I content hate i hate content <laughs> share our content uh make hey, sure we're you coming share to you live content. from nebraska share our content yeah down in texas we got content down here uh, anyways, make sure you share it with friends and family so they can all enjoy the same thing you enjoy because that's how the world works. And subscribe. Hit the subscribe button down below because that's what YouTube wants. Thank you very much. Anyways, as for myself, as for my brother, thank y'all for watching tonight. And we will see y'all tomorrow night for the Loki breakdown and review. Anyways, later. See ya.